uh, hello and welcome again in this video I want to discuss uh, why does the RSA work and the the reason for this question is because it's important to know why all this uh, going back and forward with the messages the plain text and a cipher text why does it work so let me explain a little bit more what I mean by how does it work so let's recall the uh, the setup for the RSA so what we have here is Alice with the plain text X what she does is she takes the plain text to the E power modulo N and we call that the cipher text remember that N and E are the public key of both so Alice is using this public key and so now oh, um, Alice can do this computation now when it goes to Bob with, with Y as a cipher text what Bob has to do is has to decrypt that message and what that means basically is Bob is going to take that cipher text uh, that is here Y take it to the D power and modulo N and then he gets back the X now you might be wondering why do I get back the X so that's exactly what I mean why the why this works it means why when I when Bob does this power here and takes the modulo n here why does this work so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of do a proof of exactly what that means it means that why I get back x when I do this computation here so let's look at the proof now so for the proof um, what we have is this setup so what Alice is gonna do here so Alice this is what Alice does, x, x to the e, modulo n. I'm going to use congruence. And remember, congruence here is, uh, what it means here is that these two numbers, y and x to the e, leave the same remainder when you divide it by n. Or another way to see it is that it is n divides this difference. So y minus x to the e. That's exactly what is happening here. So y equals to this, it means that y is congruent. Remember, this is red congruent with x to the e, modulo n. So this is what Alice does. Now, Bob, what it does is, remember, He's going to take the d power of y. So basically what we are doing here is taking the d power of this over here. So I get this congruence again. Now it is not difficult to prove that uh, if you take the d power and this uh, congruence, then this is also correct. So if I have a congruence, I take the d power and it's still a congruence, congruence modulo n. So we have, we have this 1 and 2. So let's call this 1 and 2 here. Now, what do we need to check in reality here? What I need to check in reality here is what I just mentioned there. So we need to check that x is congruent to y to the d modulo n, which is exactly what is happening here. If we scroll up here, this is what we mean by x equals to this, meaning that when Bob takes the d power of y and then modulo n, it gets back the x. So this is my goal. So this will be the goal. So this is what we're trying to prove uh, with what we have and also with all the properties that the numbers n, d, and e have. Remember, there was a particular way in which we chose uh, those numbers. And that's going to play a big role here in proving or in checking that this is actually true. So let's get into the work here of this. Now, for, if you look here at this equation number two, I just use the property of exponents here. You multiply e and d, and so you get that y to the d is congruent to x to the e d modulo n. So nothing really special is happening there, just uh, taking using the power there. So the power, the rules of powers. Now, let's recall something. This is where the, the choice of e and d is going to take an a important place here. Now, remember when we chose e and d, we chose them in such a way that when you multiply them, it is congruent to one modulo of phi of n. Now, if you don't remember that, then what you have to do is you have to go back and see the video on how we set up the RSA. And this is one part that is important in the RSA. The E and the D are chosen in such a way that this congruence is true. So E times D is congruent to one modulo n. Now, let's unravel what this means. So what does that mean? So when we say that these two things are congruent modulo phi of n, what that really means is that this number that is here divides the difference of these two numbers. So that means the phi of n divides e d minus one. That's exactly what that means. Another way to say it is that these two guys leave the same remainder when I divide it by phi of n. Okay, and let's unravel this a little bit more. What does this mean? That phi of n divides e d minus one. It means that this number e d minus one is a multiple of phi of n, an integer multiple of that. 
So we can write it down like this. We can say ED, ED minus 1 is actually equal to a multiple of phi of n, where this k here is uh, some integer there. Okay, so let's do a little bit of algebra here. So we move the 1 here. So then what we'll have is that ED is equal to 1 plus k phi of n, and let's call this equation number four. Now all this, what we are doing here is trying to arrive to that goal that we want, and let's recall that our goal is this one right here. This is our goal. This is what we want to arrive to. Okay, so we have this equation four that I have here. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna substitute this equation four here, substitute four, into the, equa the equation that I labeled three, or the congruence that I labeled Three. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace this ED by 1 plus k phi of n. So then we're going to obtain this. So y to the d, then I replace it. This is x to the ED, but instead of ED, I'm going to write it down as 1 plus k phi of n because of the number 4. And of course, this is modulo n. And then the next line that you see here, from here to here, the only thing I'm doing is I'm splitting up the power. So if you multiply this two x to the first, x to the k, and you get back, of course, this one over here. The next line that you see there, that is also algebra. So algebra means here that I'm applying the law of exponents. So this x to the k to the phi of n is exactly the same as this expression right here. And I'm going to call this number 5. So what is number 5 here? Number 5 says that y to the d is congruent to x times this expression that I have here. All right, so... Here is where the things get a little bit more complicated. I mean, not too much, but we will have to uh, continue the proof in two cases. Uh, this video is going to be only one case, and the next video I'll take into consideration the other case. So there are two cases here. One case is when the greatest common divisor between x and n is equal to 1, and when it's not equal to 1, that will be the second case. The greatest common divisor between x and n is not equal to 1. Now, why am I differentiating these two cases? Because if you remember, uh, Euler's theorem says that this number, x to the phi of n, is congruent to 1, but the x and the modulus have to, be, uh, have, to have no common divisor. So the GCD between x and n has to be 1. So I can replace this by 1, provided that x n and don't have common divisor. So that will be my case one. We can also do kind of as another trick in the case that with the GCD the entity between x and one is uh, x and n is not equal to one, y to the d will still be congruent to x, but not with the same argument. So that's why I have to split it into two cases. So in this video I'm gonna do case one. So let's do the proof when uh GCD of between x and n is equal to one, which is uh, just what I mentioned before, but let's put it into into mathematics. So, so let's do case one. So case one will be that the GCD between x and n is equal to one. So as I mentioned, because this GCD is equal to one, then I have Euler's theorem. Euler's theorem says that when I take this number to phi of n, then that is congruent to one modulo n. And remember, it is important that x and n have no common factor. So the GCD between them is one. If not, this might not be true. So that's why we need this condition. So with this condition here, which I'm gonna call six, I'm gonna replace, because I can do that with congruence. So basically what this is saying is that this guy is congruent to one modulo n. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace that right here in five. So I'm gonna replace this guy by something that is congruent to it, which is one. So if I do that, if I replace this fact that I have here into five, what I'm gonna get is the following. So we use 6 into 5, and then we're going to obtain y to the d is going to be congruent to x. And this is 1. This is where x to the uh, phi of n was, to the k modulo n. And of course, 1 to the k is 1, and if you multiply it by x, you get x. As you can see here, we proved what we wanted to prove, and that is the fact that when Bob takes the d power of y, gets back the plain text when they takes the modulo n. So this, fin this is the proof only under the case that the GCD between x and n is equal to 1. The other case, when the GCD between x and n is equal, no, is, is not equal to 1, we we'll still will have, we we'll still have the same conclusion, this conclusion right here, but the argument is going to be 
a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and in the next video I'll discuss exactly the same thing that we have here, the, the, same, the same goal, but the proof is going to go in a little bit of a different way. So I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.